Hey guys, what is going on? So I just wanted to talk about the subject of staying natural and why I do it, why other people might want to do it. It just kind of gives some insight from somebody who has kind of resisted that urge and uh, just kind of speaks some truth in that regard. So um, the reason I'm making this video is I saw the Modcast episode um, with Derek, which if you don't know what Modcast is, that is James English and Sush. It is their podcast. Uh, Derek was on. It was a very cool episode. And they talk about tricesterone. Then they talk about, uh, you know, why are people so obsessed with staying natural? And I think that's kind of this <laughs> subject that I have to talk about um, in terms of a lot of people who take tricesterone or ectosterone are people who want to stay natural, right? And they don't want the side effects. They don't want their natty car to go away, stuff like that. So um, first thing I want to mention is, you know, the three guys who are discussing this on the Modcast, I believe they all took either SARMs, Pro Hormones, uh, actual gear as a teenager, right? So their mindset on this is totally different. I'm not saying that them in their like current way of thinking would have made that same decision, but when you're 18, 19 years old, your brain is not fully developed in terms of really being able to gauge like what consequences are going to come from your actions this is coming from somebody who got a whole bunch of terrible tattoos before i was 20 and um i just would not recommend <laughs> doing something like that if you're going to get some tattoos that's cool but i would probably wait as long as possible and make sure that you at least have some brain development so that you uh, actually make smarter decisions because these are like permanent things that you're getting on your body and I wouldn't recommend doing that as a teenager. Now, maybe you get like one or two, but I, you know, got a whole bunch. But anyway, making those decisions and then living with the consequences and being able to kind of explain that, right? So um, if, if you started gear at a young age, you learned how to manage the side effects, you are in that community and you learned how your body responds to it and you're getting, you know, 100,000 social media followers and you're famous for it, like obviously those people are going to be like, dude, why wouldn't you take gear? It's awesome. <laughs> but there's a whole other group of people who don't respond well to gear, didn't get any type of Instagram cloud, or maybe they did this years before like Instagram even existed and they just had to deal with the side effects or maybe they came off, maybe fitness isn't their career, right? There are so many potential ways that this could go south. And I'm not trying to say that these people... Uh, James, Derek, and Seuss don't know this, but my point is just that there's another side to this of people who, you know, are just scared of the potential things that could happen or people who started too early and they jumped the gun. They probably made the decision before they should have. And I think if you were to ask those guys, even though they are very okay with taking it now, um, they probably would have waited a bit more, done a smarter approach. Maybe they would have uh, waited and learned a bit more before they took the specific compound that they did. Um, they would have taken a lower dose, whatever else, right? There's always more that you can learn. And uh, for somebody like me who is prone to some of these side effects, I don't know about actually taking the thing, but in terms of like I already have hair loss, I already take a hair loss prevention stack and I'm not even on anything. Um, I already have high blood pressure. That's something that runs in my family. So, you know, potential uh, heart issues are very, you know, concerning for me. Uh, hair loss is concerning for me. And, you know, those type of side effects can affect anybody. But I think I would be very prone to have, you know, negative side effects for my health, for my appearance, something that I wouldn't really want. Um, and also the subject of keeping your natty card as being just this kind of stupid thing that doesn't matter. I think it does matter. I mean... To, if you're trying to make it on social media and you have a certain physique and you know, you're know you unnatural and all of a sudden people look at your physique as less impressive, right? If you have a not very impressive physique, if you don't respond that well to gear and you know when people ask if you're natural or not, people might not even ask because your physique is not that impressive. And to have to be like, oh yeah, I'm not natural, even though my physique isn't that good. Like that's not a situation that people want to be in. Or maybe your physique is kind of that borderline and people would be like, wow, this guy, you know, really knows his stuff. Or this is a very common thing. People, you know, are on gear, say that they're not, helps them sell programs, helps them sell supplements, anything like that. But if they, if it was public knowledge that they took gear or they took like high doses, it'd be like, okay, well, this guy's just taking gear. Why should I listen to him? Right? So there are a lot of reasons. Um, another one is like, explain it to your friends and family. Like I'm sure some of you guys have already dealt with this, but 
if you're taking trichesterone or ectisterone and somebody in your life is like, you know, what is this? And you have to explain it to them. It's not, it's like, oh man, I have to explain how this is not like, it's not like I'm pinning testosterone or something like that. It's this whole other thing. It's just not a conversation I want to have. I would only imagine what that conversation is like if you're actually taking like real gear. Um, you know, people in your life might not approve of it. Uh, it's just, there are so many things that could be detrimental in terms of just wanting to keep your natty card just for the sake of saying it. And that's why I think people try something like turcosterone, ectosterone, maybe not even to avoid long-term, you know, side effects. Like I know a lot of young people who probably aren't even thinking in that way. They're probably just like, I want to stay natural because it's more impressive if I do this as a natural. And that's a totally valid point. I don't know why people try and act like that's not a valid thing. And that's how people think about things. I mean, anybody who's been using gear, I'm sure you could talk about your comment section, having people all the time being like, yeah, but you're on gear. So it doesn't matter. It's like, clearly it's not the case, but you just have to deal with this stuff. And you know, if you're trying to make it in the fitness industry, and you have all these people lying about being natural when they're not. And then if you're open about it, then you seem less impressive. And I don't know. I just think there, there are a lot of reasons. And even if it's not for health purposes, um, I wouldn't even say it's like moral purposes. It's just like, you know, maybe that's not the lifestyle that you want to endorse or it's not something you want to explain or you don't want to be on it for the rest of your life or there's a number of reasons. But I think having an option like turcosterone or ectosterone, like something that legitimately works and is not just some like, you know, I, I feel like there are so many natural muscle builders that just don't do anything or do, you know, barely anything. When you have something like this, I think it's just an option for people who are kind of on the fence. And I have a lot of people in my DMs like, man, you know, I was thinking about like, I really wanted to do like gear or something like that. I was tempted. And then I found this and now it's like, I feel like I have another option. And who's to say those people, you know, probably are going to end up doing something in the long run anyway. But as long as you can postpone that and get them into a mental state where they're more able to actually look at long-term health consequences or just overall, like what you're going to have to commit to when you start taking this kind of stuff, I think postponing it for as long as possible and seeing what your natural limit can be like is beneficial. And I'm not saying that I'm not anti-gear, you know, obviously so many people that I look up to in this, in this industry take it. And I don't see a problem with that at all, especially when they're transparent about it. I absolutely love that. It's just that there are people who don't want to do that. And I think that, uh, kind of diminishing their opinion of just being like, oh, they're obsessed with how people think of them. Like, yeah, I mean, that's a human thing. Like, you know, it's not bad to want to stay natty just for the sake of it. And it's not bad to, you know, value your health. And I know these people, um, you know, nowadays are very good at like getting blood work and everything like that. It's like, I don't even get my blood work. So I'm not saying that I'm this pinnacle of health. You know, I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying that going down that path, there's a lot of other things that you have to be prepared for. And it's just a huge commitment. And I just don't think it's fair to, um, to be that person in the comments who's like, why are you spending this much money on Turk when you could buy gear and get way better results? It's like, clearly there are other reasons why people would want to stay natural. And, uh, I guess as me being somebody who is still natural, I have no intentions of not being natural. I guess you could say I'm obsessed with keeping my natty card. Um, but there are some people who don't even consider Turk uh, natural, which is the very small minority, but there are some people out there who say that. And, you know, at the end of the day, if I'm doing something that I think is not going to be detrimental to my health, that's helping me achieve results, helping me make progress, um, I can, you know, share that for those of you who want that alternative. That's what I'm going to try and do. And that's just, you know, me giving my opinion, but I just kind of wanted to say that because... I get that question a lot and I have this conversation a lot and, um, yeah, I think, I think it is valuable to retain your natty card for as long as possible. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's all I gotta say about that. I'll keep you updated and I'll talk to you soon.